Hello and welcome to Real English with Real Teachers. Today is a very quick one, but uh, we have a delightful guest and that is Lucy. Hello, Lucy. How are you doing? Hello. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm splendid. This video is going to be a quick fire round for Lucy. So um, should we get straight into it? Are you ready? Yes. First question. Do you prefer texting or talking? Talking. Anyone who texts with me will know Oh no, it's a quick fire and now I'm expanding. Um, anyone who knows me will know that via WhatsApp, I do a lot of voice notes, long ones. Do, yes, you do voice notes. Yeah, quite long, yes. All right, next one is, uh, what's the favorite day of the week? Saturday, because I know that I've still got Sunday uh, to look forward to. Okay, nice. Uh, what's your favorite city in the UK? Oh, that's a hard one. I loved Edinburgh. That was absolutely beautiful. Oh, that is hard. See, I like little towns more than cities, but I'm going to go for Edinburgh. You can, you can, you can change it to a town if you like. I really like the Cotswolds. So Stowe on the Wold was lovely. Cheltenham's quite nice. Yeah, any Cotswolds towns and villages. Not bad at all. Cotswolds, lovely. What is your nickname? Your parents used to call you. Lolly, and also Bus, uh, because we don't really know why. It just developed over time. Bus. I'll call you Lolly. What was the last song uh, you listened to? This is a bit random. Oh, so I don't really listen to much music, but Will is just constant. Uh, and it is one by Dua Lipa. I don't know which one it is, but it's never ending and I'm constantly asking him to turn it off. <laughs> Misery guts. I like silence or podcasts including yours. Oh, cheeky. Very nice. Okay. I like this one. Would you rather be able to speak every language in the world or be able to talk to animals? Oh, that's a hard one. I mean, I would love to talk to animals. I would, but I think it'd be a bit annoying. I think it'd be like walk, walk, snack, treat, walk. I don't think his vocabulary would be that advanced. Um, I probably would say, I think I would say animals, but maybe the dialogue would be quite sad. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm looking too deeply into this. Every language. <laughs> That's a great point. Yeah, okay. Uh, favourite holiday? Um, I took Will to Seville for a weekend. Uh, that's where I used to live. And it's possibly one of my favourite places on earth. I think it is actually one of my favourite places. And that was absolutely gorgeous because I got to show him a part of my life that he had never seen before. So Seville is particularly unique within Spain, would you say? Yes. Yeah, how so? Well, I think Spain is, you know, every town there is different. Every city is different. It's so rich in culture. But S Seville, for me, was unique because when I was living there, I was living with a family from Seville. So I think I got a real insight into their culture. I also learned Spanish there. So I feel very connected in that way. The food is incredible. The dancing, the music, their celebrations, the feria every year they have a ferrier where everyone wears flamenco dresses. I have two. I need to get them dry cleaned actually. Sometimes I just eat my dinner in them. <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take you to get ready for your dinner? No, not for uh, For filming or for every day? Every day to start with? Every day I would say half an hour, but filming, that's a whole nother story. Uh, at least an hour, at least an hour. So I listen to podcasts when I do that because otherwise I would go insane. Um, what about just going out for the night? Oh, going out for the night. Yeah, probably another hour. If I'm going, if I'm getting glammed up, uh, then I do need a bit of time to put all these curls in my hair. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, so scale of one to 10, how good are you at driving? Oh, it would be a one. Uh, the one is earned because I actually passed my driving test eventually. I think I met you in person just after I had passed my driving test. And I still drive the orange mini. I don't know if I've told you this before, but um, I bought the car, my first ever car. I had just uh, passed the driving test. It took me, here's a riddle. I, I turned up to the driving center four times, but I only failed twice. What happened? Your mother was the driving instructor. No, I don't know. <laughs> I actually turned up on a day that I hadn't actually booked the test. Um, I had got through to the final stage of the online booking form, but I didn't press confirm. And I did like an hour and a half 
of driving practice, paid for with my instructor before, I was so nervous, so ready, sat there, everyone else got called and um, I never did and they said they didn't have a Lucy on their books. Uh, but I eventually did pass, bought a car and when I drove it out of the, the car shop, the car dealership, um, I, it's in, it was in Milton Keynes, which is a city in the UK, which is famous for having so many roundabouts. It's a very new city. I think it was developed in the late 80s to early 90s. And it was this very strict plan with lots of straight roads and roundabouts. And I got to the first roundabout, stalled, which meant my car stopped, the engine switched off, and I had to um, put it back into first gear and go forward. But I didn't, I wasn't used to my new gear stick, put it into reverse <laughs> and went straight back into the person behind me, smashed their number plate. The police came and they created like a way for me to go out and I went straight through a red light. But I just kept on driving. I just wanted to get home at that point. <laughs> it was horrendous. Oh, brilliant. You stuck your middle finger up outside the window. So are you giving yourself a, a one? A one, I'm a terrible driver. Um, well, I do try, maybe a three. I do try, I'm very friendly when I drive. I live for the thank you. When I, let, when I let someone through, that thank you from them, it means so much to me. I always give thank yous even when I don't need to. If someone is obliged to let me through, I'm like, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm very courteous, uh, but I'm just, I just think I take a little bit longer to work out what to do. And also I, I struggle with my lefts and rights. So I'm constantly trying to remember who goes first at a roundabout. Yeah. I remember actually with my driving instructor, he was telling me that he had a, another student who was on their 40th attempt of a test and they were still going the wrong way around the roundabout. I can relate slightly. Really? It's not even about learning. It's about a certain awareness of which side of your body is which. Everyone says, you know, just think of your right hand being the hand that you write with. And I look at my hands and I just don't know which one I write with. <laughs> it's, a, it's a genuine thing. I think when I first met my fiance, Will, he thought I was playing it up and making it more of a big, a, making it a bigger deal than it actually was. But over time, he's realised, damn, this is a genuine problem. <laughs> All right, fill in the blank. Taylor Swift is? Inspirational. We watched her um, Miss Americana uh, documentary the other day and it was very clear how hard she works. Nice, yeah, respect that, yeah, okay. At what age do you want to retire? Do you know what? I don't know if I will I ever see myself 100% retiring. I'll always need something to keep my brain busy, uh, but I think 60 sounds good, 60 to 65. I agree with what you said though, like, um, the older generations, they obviously assume about assume that they will get retirement. But I think our generation, I don't know if I can speak for everyone, but I feel like we might not even see what retirement really is. Like we're getting older and older and there's going to be less money for us. Also, 60 and 65 doesn't seem that old anymore. I know so many 60 to 65 year olds. I mean, my dad, he runs 10Ks in amazing times. He's got the most incredible like stream of hobbies. He plays in a band, he plays squash. Oh, you know, he's got such a rich life. Well, Tom Cruise is two years away from being 60. Is he? Uh, he looks great. And I think if you keep yourself healthy and you keep your mind busy and well-oiled. And you sign yourself up for Scientology. Yes, very important. <laughs> Invisibility or super strength? Invisibility, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it means I wouldn't have to do my makeup. But then you wouldn't have many videos. No, that's true. It might make the editing easier. Um, is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? I don't even know what animal crackers are. Where did you find these questions? <laughs> I think that's absolutely fine. I think when it comes to vegetarianism and veganism, I think people should stop being so hard on themselves. Um, I know crackers don't contain any animal products, but honestly, if you make one mistake, it's okay. But okay, so I just Googled what animal crackers are. They are uh, crackers in the shape of little animals, like an elephant. 
So nothing to do with actually eating meat then. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. And they can eat fake meat if they want. And if they accidentally mess up and eat something with a bit of meat in it, it's okay. I know so many vegans that have accidentally consumed an animal product and have then felt so guilty that they're not a vegan anymore. You're still a vegan. It's fine. Yeah, give yourselves a break. All right, that's the end of the uh, quick fire round. Thank you, Lucy. Goodbye. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> I think I throw you off. <laughs> I'm going to keep that. Now, before we go, uh, Lucy sent me one of her vocabulary diaries that she has recently poured her blood, sweat and tears into. And after looking through it and, and trying it out a bit myself, I thought you guys would like to know a bit about it. So this is one of the four options. Uh, Lucy made it because when she was trying to break beyond that intermediate plateau in her language learning journey with Spanish, she wished that she had a diary to capture all of the vocabulary that she was acquiring. But honestly, it's so much more than just a vocab diary. She's put a monthly habit tracker in here to help you stay accountable. She's got daily idioms with definitions for three whole months in each planner. And unlike most online daily idiom generators out there, um, these are actually worth learning. Um, like if I just open to a random page to see if I like it or not. Um, uh, no, that one's not very good actually. No, probably, I'm joking, I'm joking. So this one is to draw the short straw, uh, to be selected to do an undesirable task. So for example, you drew the short straw when you got sent abroad. So you've got a clean definition and then an example sentence. And as I said, you've got three months of them in each planner. Let me just check another one. To hit the sack. Yeah, great one. To hit the sack, to go to bed. I'm exhausted. Do you mind if I hit the sack? But it's even more than just daily idioms. She's got synonym and antonym pages for you to fill out, irregular verb charts, and, and some really nice language booster sections. It's got it all. So if you like uh, to write your vocabulary out on paper, then check out the English plan. This is on Lucy's website. So go to englishwithlucy.co.uk and um, yeah, check out these English plans. Remember to grab the free worksheet from today's episode. If you wanted transcripts, then you'll want to sign up for the premium podcast. And if you want a whole world of learning resources with me, Charlie Baxter, then check out the Academy over on the British English podcast.com. All right, that's all folks. See you next time on Real English with Real Teachers.